Section 5.4 is division of decimals. And you can see that we can use different symbols. This divided by sign, the radical sign, or a fraction uh, is a quotient of integers, and that indicates division. In this first section, uh, we're dividing a decimal by a whole number or an integer. So I have 3.18 divided by 6. And we're just going to move the decimal point up onto the quotient line and divide as we would ordinarily. So uh, 5 times 6 is 30. Subtract and get 1. We bring down the 8. 6 goes into 18 three times. And we have no remainder. Uh, 7 is going into 16 twice. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract, and we have 2, bring down the 1, and we have no remainder. And here I'm going to divide 25 into 48. I'll worry about the negative when I'm finished. And notice I can put a decimal point and zeros after words, um, and you'll see why in a second. So 25 goes into 48 once, and when I subtract, I have 23. I don't want to have a remainder with these. So I'm going to move this decimal point onto the quotient line, and these zeros that I've tacked on, I can bring down, and I can continue dividing. So 9 times 5 is 45. So... Here, when I subtract, I have 5, bring down the 0, and 25 goes into 52 times. So this is what we call a terminating decimal. It terminates, it ends. Um, in this next example, first of all, um, we have a decimal point in the divisor, and that's not going to work out for us. So. If we take this 6.2 and divide it by 0 0.33 and look at it as a fraction, um, we do want our divisor to be a whole number. So recall from the last section, if I multiply by 100, that's going to move this decimal point two places to the right, giving me the whole number 33. Well, if I'm going to multiply by 100, I have to do the same thing in the numerator um, so that I'm multiplying the entire fraction by 1 so as not to change its value. So if we multiply this 0.33 by 100, we also have to multiply 6.2 times 100. So as long as I move the decimal point the same number of places in both the dividend and divisor, um, then I'm... Uh, not changing any values, and I'm able to do that. So this is the same as dividing 33 into 620. So uh, so here I'll subtract. I get 29, and now I'm going to bring down the zero. And 8 times 3 is 24. And here I'm going to subtract uh, 10 minus 4 is 6. And now again, I'm going to add some zeros and bring them down. This goes in 7 times. And what I'm seeing here is that I have what's called a repeating decimal. And if I keep dividing, I'm going to have 18.7878. And once I recognize the pattern, I'm just going to write my quotient this way, 18.78. And I'm going to put a horizontal bar on top of the 7.8, and that indicates that that decimal part is repeating. Um, and last, I'm going to divide 0 0.8 
into 0 0.298. So I have to move my decimal point one place in the divisor and dividend. So uh, this is going to go in three times. And seven is 56. And then I'm going to just add some zeros. And we're going to always keep dividing until we have either a terminating decimal, as we do here, or a repeating decimal, as we do there. And last, we're going to divide by powers of 10 using a shortcut similar to the one we did with multiplication of powers of 10. When we divide it by a power of 10, we move the decimal point to the left, the same number of places as there are zeros in the power of 10. So when I, excuse me, when I divide by 100, I simply move my decimal point two places to the left. And here I'm dividing by um, 10. So I'm going to move my decimal point one place to the left. So I have 0 0.0029. And negative divided by negative is a positive. And here I'm moving three places to the left at 0 0.1628. And I just recognized that back up here, my quotient was negative and I forgot to put that there. And that's it for 5.4.